good afternoon to you all uh, today we are going to discuss about the uh, different gis data models so under this uh, uh, lecture basically what will follow is uh, that we'll try to understand uh, how the gis analysis is uh, dependent upon gis data structure so we'll just see that uh, uh, an example which we have seen earlier and how to execute that particular problems, how the data is going to organize. Then we'll see the standard uh, GI data structure formats uh, and uh, the way the, uh, the different kind of spatial relationship, especially that uh, the data set belonging to uh, of same theme or a different theme, uh, if there's any kind of a spatial relationship is there. So in case of same theme data sets, how the uh, data relationship is being uh, stored that's we call it a topology of data set so we'll see that and then uh, we'll also see uh, the cases of uh, how the gis data set is now having an extension to uh, database management systems where data uh, and like the, the data set is not uh, the gis data set is not only being stored in a particular file format but they are also now being stored in uh, relational databases. So we'll see uh, a few example of that. And then the recent open standard uh, based data models, which is now providing a kind of uh, uh, and gateway where different uh, software can talk to each other by considering a kind of harmonization between those data sets. So we'll see a few of uh, the example of uh, those uh, uh, data structure as well. So if you remember uh, this, we had discussed this problem in the, uh, the le first lectures and there we just uh, uh, try to find out a problem where we have to find out a, a path or the shortest path from location A uh, to location B. So this, this basically we define uh, earlier we understood that in a GIS what we have to do is we have to create a a set of GIS questions and then finally we have to use few GIS tools and based on those uh, tools which will be used uh, or which will be worked on a different software solutions then finally a solution will be arise and that's how the answer which will uh, get it. So this is the way the, the user requirement is getting uh, uh, created and then in the GIS we have to break down this GIS question in such a way that the different GIS operations can be performed on this and we also need to do a proper arrangement of our data set. So today's uh, actual lecture is basically dependent or is being uh, focused on this component where we say that uh, what are the different ways of uh, organizing your data set so that the different GIS operation or analysis which can be carried out and then finally we can get a a data set which can be used for uh, generating the output. So today is basically the uh, the lecture is basically going to focus on how the data is being organized in GIS environment uh, systems. So in earlier cases, uh, the basic thing what we had is that the location A is having a name called IRS and location B is basically uh, another locations which is called clock tower and each of these two point is having uh, a position so that position is being given in term of coordinate system so this is the latitude and longitude uh, for uh, IRS and uh, uh, the corresponding clock tower is being provided and then we are also having uh, uh, details about the different uh, ways that what are the different road which is connecting between uh, or, or what are the different road segment which is present between location A to location B and then we have uh, we are having a few segment of those roads uh, like Kallas road is one of them, Chakrata road is another one and so on. So these are the basic uh, informations which is available to you. And what we need to do is in any GIS software, this information needs to be organized in a machine data format. The basic objective of organization is that it should be able, uh, the data should be stored in a standard format and as well as it should aid to uh, different GIS analysis. So if you see over here, uh, the, uh, the location A and B is actually called a point data sets and that is a kind of 
geometry where uh, wherever we are having uh, location a and b which is uh, also having a coordinate number so this is basically an xy coordinate for uh, point a and point b in 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 a in a coordinate systems so these are actually called the uh, these pair of latitude and longitude or an x and y if you say if you, if you put these in a pair then that is called, that forms a chord system and this system is basically a coordinate systems and then we are having a few uh, segments so these segments are nothing but a part of a road which is nothing but a kind of simple uh, linear features connecting uh, different points and in between you will be having a lot of intermediate uh, vertex so uh, uh, those segments is actually a kind of linear features uh, this is again a kind of uh, the geometry uh, the, the way we are having a point geometry similarly we are having a line geometry over here and then we are also going to have an additional attribute for these geometry maybe the name of that uh, road segment or maybe the time taken by these uh, different uh, uh, travel time for each of those road segment can also be considered as an attribute so these uh, important informations like locations uh, the kind of uh, information which you want to store and that there are different uh, uh, attributes are are actually uh, needs to be converted into machine data formats and that is basically uh, uh, the data models uh, which is actually uh, responsible for uh, organizing all these uh, machine data an objective of all these is that we should be able to carry out analysis like uh, in this case let's say the uh, the shortest time which we expected uh, after the doing analysis that we will reach it in seven minutes so if you see in machine data formats whatever information we had few uh, locations a location data set that is the vertex and then we are also having a geometry and then we are also having a few attributes so all these are actually of uh, are, uh, as a collectively called as in gis data and these gis data can be uh, managed or stored in in a different way so those uh, are actually also called a map data so as a part of map data there are different format like vector raster and tin formats vector raster is basically for planimetric data so it means like it will have an x and y location but z location will be missing where in case of 10 uh, tin format you will be having a location x and y and along with that you will also have an height information so these so these are also called a map data or the file based uh, systems which is present and this is generally a part of uh, uh, any gis uh, software so it will have a kind of internal arrangement to store all these uh, data sets apart from the uh, the gis software specific format there are also now the databases which are available and it is having an extension which lets it to uh, store the different um, uh, geographical information data sets so those are actually a simple extension of relational databases and these uh, databases are storing the attribute information based on the principle of uh, uh, the different relational or algebraic uh, relational algebra based uh, method like normalizations and those principle is being followed along with that they will also have an additional functionality which are important for carrying out the uh, gis queries for example uh, we need to find out the intersection of between point a and point b so <coughs> excuse me so in that case we need, whenever we are looking for uh, to find out uh, the buffer around uh, point a and buffer around point b so there has to be a kind of geometrical functions available within the databases and that's that's how when these geometrical function is being added to relational databases then we get a geospatial data set databases which is capable of not only the storing the uh, geographical uh, attribute data but it is also able to do uh, some kind of uh, gis uh, analysis so whenever we say that these geospatial data needs to be organized in a uh, machine data format so as we have pointed uh, out 
like we will be having a few geometries and then we'll have we also will be having an attribute generally these two are being uh, i should say uh, any data set uh, will be or any geospatial data set will have these two component uh, associated with it the geometry basically forms or provides the kind of uh, point line or polygon so it basically gives the arrangement or spread of different uh, geographical features and attribute data basically gives the additional information related to those uh, geometrical objects so we'll be having uh, an information about that point or locations and then we'll also having we do have an additional information like road name length and so on so these are basically an attribute data so any kind of uh, gis data format should be able to store this uh, and geospatial information uh, which is uh, again a geometrical data set and as well as attribute data apart from these two uh, the basically the geospatial data set uh, are also expected to have some auxiliary data sets so these auxiliary data sets are not directly related to uh, the information but rather then they are useful for carrying out any meaningful operations or the gis operations in any gis software so these are called the coordinate systems extent scales and so on so these basically the, these informations basically guides uh, or provides the kind of output result which we expect uh, to carry out on any data sets so to for any geospatial informations you need to have an uh, uh, the actual data of uh, the geospatial data that is nothing but geometry and attribute and along with that it should also have an coordinate uh, system for uh, that particular uh, geographical uh, feature so to store those uh, data sets uh, in gis uh, it's basically a two different family of uh, data set which is present one family is that is called uh, uh, the pure coordinate based system and is having a a regular grid structure like this so these are nothing but each of those grid will have a fixed size and based on the grid sizes uh, we can locate any specific location and within that grid we can fill the attribute so we are having a kind of arrangement where different informations can be stored in a grid format so generally in, in geospatial domain uh, uh, the we are expect to have or we are expected to store the uh, geospatial data and all the geospatial data is broadly going to have uh, either a point or line or a polygon format so if if we if we want to put these information in a raster format then we will simply look for a kind of uh, uh, the grid location that is x and y location within the grid and that grid will be filled with uh, the value present in uh, in this and that's how we can create and store the uh, different geometrical object over here we are having uh, a different uh, sets of point data so wherever this point is falling on the grid the overlay on the top of it that grid that grid will now be uh, grouped it or named it based on this point data similarly it is uh, the same is the case with the uh, the linear features so wherever this linear feature will fall in into uh, this grid systems uh, the data point uh, can be uh, the corresponding grid value can take those values and we will have a kind of linear features similarly is the true for the, um, uh, the basically the area based uh, features now if you have observed that in case of uh, uh, raster data what we see is that there are uh, the grid which has been filled in and these grids whenever is getting represented uh, back uh, to the users then they are no longer a smooth curve rather than it will have uh, a kind of uh, uh, the staircase effect and these effects will only will be visible when we go beyond the specific uh, zoom scale so if if we are if you are within the zoom scale then we will not be able to notice this uh, 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 the staircase effect but as you zoom uh, basically zoom in uh, to a particular area then the staircase effect can is uh, can easily be visible so this is basically a 
uh, are storage of raster format based on any coordinate systems where the grid structure is being provided. Similarly, we also have uh, a data set of storing the data in a vector format. So in this vector format, each of these individual uh, nodes uh, or a vertex are first marked and through a, a coordinate system value for all these grids will be uh, stored. And uh, these grids or these nodes will represent uh, the position of these uh, different vertices present in any one of these three geometries. So we'll be having a linear features which is consist of a set of uh, linear uh, geometry. Along with that, we are also having a set of uh, points which can be used to uh, points which can be, uh, which will also have a kind of XY coordinate system associated with that. And we'll also have an area. So the area will again will be a bounded uh, uh, layer uh, or a bounded, uh, 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 this is basically a closed segment. So this closed segment, which is nothing but a kind of linear feature, but at the end you'll be having a ring closed back to uh, at the beginning. So that's that's how the area is being formed. So these are get these in, in this case the vectors basically the vector data format basically stores all these nodes whatever we see in this uh, special uh, uh, or this geo uh, basically uh, geospatial objects and the uh, the Storage of auxiliary information are actually based on the kind of projection system which we use. So this projection system is required for the planimetric representation of any one of the data sets. The reason is that our earth features are actually in 3D world or it's a 3D coordinate systems. And we need to look for some uh, a way to put the all the 3D information in 2D sheets and paper. So there are different projection systems which are responsible for providing or giving formulas which helps us to do a projection of this 3D coordinate systems into a 2D plane. And these, these two, that is the different raster and vector format along with the, uh, uh, the spatial referencing systems actually forms the complete geospatial data in vector and uh, raster format which are appropriate for representing on uh, any uh, for carrying out or for representing the data uh, where we consider our flay uh, our uh, area of study is completely flat in nature but sometime uh, for carrying out the analysis we also need to accommodate the height informations to store the height, uh, one of the vector model is uh, is basically a tin which will have a regular uh, or a, a kind of a set of irregular tri uh, triangulation based on that the data set so the set of uh, triangles will be created and these triangles basically are being governed by a principle uh, uh, so that any two uh, circles would not intersect, there has to be a minimum distances between uh, uh, the points, the point has to be, uh, and like there are a few set of rules which helps us to define where exactly one particular point should be created in to generate a complete uh, uh, tin models. So as you have seen that there are different formats to store those data sets. Those are actually vector. Then, then they are also having a raster data format and then we are having a tin data format. So let's have uh, a look of the different proposed models for storing the vector data sets. So as we know that uh, the vector data set is going to have a, a set of uh, location. So those locations are not also called coordinates. So these coordinates will be in accordance to the, the kind of referencing system which we have applied. And based on that referencing system, each point will be noted down. It will be kept as a, uh, as a value in a, uh, in, in a file. And these vector data, the basic point of that vector data is actually a point. And these points are again linked with, uh, by a, uh, a linear features or simple line which will have a multiple point associated uh, uh, to uh, a, par a particular line. And then these lines when it gets closed, then we call it in a polygon. 
so vector data actually organizes or the basic uh, the input uh, for these vector data is that you'll be having a set of coordinates representing the point and these point when gets combined together then we get point line or polygon informations and as we see uh, that uh, these uh, uh, units or these uh, representation of vector data of, uh, representation of any geospatial objects in form of point line or polygons are actually based on a coordinate uh, point or location of uh, the different uh, points now what exactly is the uh, coordinates uh, if if uh, if you see from the geometry uh, in the previous slide we see that this is basically a coordinate system defined uh, though over here the it looks like a graph structure which is showing a regular grid size but in case of vector we have we have to consider it that there is no such grid is available and wherever we want to mark any place that place can be uh, created so these place location in x direction and as well as in y direction actually uh, represents uh, the location on this uh, uh, grid or in, in this coordinate systems so this this forms a kind of pair of points which are actually called a, a, a coordinates so in the previous example the coordinates are basically the x values and the y values and based on those x and y values, we will be able to pinpoint the locations on which this data is actually expected to be present. So, uh, a coordinate system is basically a pair of numbers expressing horizontal or uh, vertical uh, directions along an orthogonal axis. Now, this is very interesting uh, way of uh, telling that the two uh, coordinate system, that is x and y direction, has to be in such a way that it is at 90 degree to the, the two lines are actually at a 90 degree uh, to each other uh, and for and, and thus is basically called the orthogonal axis so orthogonal axis in this case is basically these two line which are actually perpendicular to each other and this forms a uh, orthogonal coordinate system so within this orthogonal coordinate system we need to have an x and y location present uh, in it and all the uh, uh, the vector data is actually will have uh, locations uh, with respect to some references so generally these references are actually built in as a part of uh, georeferencing systems and uh, there are different parameters from six different parameter has to be used to define a particular coordinate systems so there are two way of representing it either it is called an earth centric uh, representation which is nothing but allowing it that or, or uh, allowing the the datum or the, or the surfaces which approximates the the shape of the earth in such a way that uh, the the actual earth and corresponding surface uh, created uh, or estimated based on the different measurements should coincide with each other means that they need to share a common uh, locations so those are actually a way of uh, representing the uh, data sets uh, uh, for uh, uh, which which is in sync of uh, each other the the basic unit of all these vector data are actually a point data or a line uh, data sets in the point data generally we see any features which which we cannot represent as a length or as a area in those cases we choose to uh, pinpoint or we like to uh, put it that locations uh, as a point uh, so a, a city like Dehradun can be shown as a point or it can also be shown as a polygon so if if in our our set of uh, representation if we expect that Dehradun is should not be represented as a uh, or it's, it's uh, the area or a, or a length of uh, uh, Dehradun doesn't matter in those cases even Dehradun can be shown as a point and this is what we do it whenever we want to show any kind of uh, uh, city maps uh, in in, uh, in 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 locations in different locations. Now these points can be combined together with a, a linear linkage, and that we and, we, and that that basically gives the uh, the kind of new representations which will have uh, 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 
a set of coordinates which are linked with each other uh, based on the uh, uh, common feature sharing that is all the coordinates which belongs to or which is particular to a r will share the same uh, name and other attribute data but at the geometrical levels the different nodes will be having a different uh, location points though they will be sharing the same attribute uh, data so in that cell what we can say is that uh, a line is basically uh, a jaw uh, uh, features which cannot be represented as a complete area and it will have only a restricted length so in such cases we represent the uh, line and any earth or geospatial features which can be represented and uh, as an area as a whole in those cases that uh, uh, the vector data model actually says that we can store that uh, data set in form of uh, vector data so let's have a look of uh, the different presentation of uh, the data sets uh, in generic form and as well as few specific form or, or, or data structure what we see so this is your uh, a simple referencing system uh, or a coordinate systems over here we can assume that this to be an uh, origin so as you move one unit uh, on the grid so the corresponding location will be marked for example uh, the location at uh, uh, the location which is being presented over here is that 1 comma 1 and uh, is basically for a red uh, red coordinate uh, uh, or, or maybe it is basically a, a line based segment which is having a location associated with that in vector format the location need not have to snap to the uh, center point of your grid rather than it can start it at any location within the grid so and and that, that location is getting estimated uh, uh, in in your databases or in your in your gis data set in such a way uh, that it gives the exact location of the vertices present in either in a linear features or in a polygon features so these uh, uh, data sets or, or these uh, locations uh, can be uh, a real number instead of having an integers and this is uh, so over here we see that there are few point data sets like location 1 2 3 4 5 so there are total 10 different points which we can observe over here uh, which are marked in yellow color so these points will have an uh, fractional uh, number in x and y directions and this as a whole forms a pair of coordinate uh, uh, points and that represents the location within the uh, our spatial reference frame along with that uh, if if our data set is having a kind of linear features then for each of those linear feature we need to tell or which we need to say that one particular uh, linear features or maybe uh, point based feature uh, is going to have uh, what are the nodes present to those geometry so so that is getting stored either in form of uh, line data sets or it may be a polygon in, in line will be having a starting and ending points so that gets marked and it also represents the number of present in the list in a node list so that if any node is getting and deleted the the corresponding information should be available and to each of those uh, nodes which is providing that data sets and in the basis on the basis of that uh, the decisions can be taken uh, that we need to uh, go for uh, a, a representation of that data set in a specific format then we are also having uh, another way of representing a close uh, ring so that close ring is basically a line and the close line or arc length which is being presented in a vector uh, format the special relationship is stored in form of uh, topologies and we'll see in more uh, detail on this uh, in coming slides so let's see that how the uh, data sets uh, which is present in a vector format is actually stored uh, in in a computer or machine level uh, formats so if you just see that this is a simple spatial referencing uh, uh, systems and you have multiple nodes uh, which is being represented over here in some cases these nodes have an independent identity like the point b which is having just locations or these nodes consist a line or a polygon so in a spaghetti model what uh, is being done that 
we take on topmost features and then we list down the number of nodes present in that uh, feature. So over here, the topmost features which we see is basically a polygon. So polygon A and it is having uh, six different co coordinates. So we mention it uh, uh, in, in data sets that polygon A is having uh, six different uh, uh, nodes and the corresponding list of all the nodes. So these nodes like uh, the, the node number one, which is having a location 1.8 comma 2.6. So it means like it is slightly more than the one and correspondingly it is uh, uh, slightly less than the uh, three. So it means that this location point is actually getting represented by a pair uh, of point in term of X and Y direction. So that is getting uh, stored over here. So, uh, so this is the first coordinate is get stored. Similarly, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth coordinate gets stored in an arrangement. So this gives the complete data set for defining the, uh, uh, the polygon. Then we can also have uh, uh, a, a way to represent any specific locations and generally any location or a point will have just coordinate system associated, uh, associated with that. So it is having a uh, number and says that it is a, a simple vertex and its location is basically marked as 4 comma uh, 4. In some cases, if you want to represent a linear features, then again we have to say that uh, which all the point uh, locations for this particular uh, uh, linear feature is there. So it can be 1 comma 2, then 2, 3.5 comma 2, 7 and so on. So each of those point which is part of any line gets uh, um, uh, stored in your data sets and the, it gives the kind of uh, the linear features name and along with the, uh, the information or so the number of nodes present in that. So this model is basically a very simple which stores all the coordinates of a locations and which also stores that any geospatial objects consist of how many uh, vertex and what is the association between them. So this, this was the quite earlier model and this was quite simple. It was easy to manage and uh, because you don't have to manage any specific data set, simply start writing all the information in a file and then your data set is uh, stored. The biggest drawback of this uh, excuse me, is that it is having a no topologies. So it means like it will have no interrelationship between two points. So it is not able to distinguish that on the left side of this uh, polygon uh, is uh, any specific area is present or on the right side which all area is present. Such information cannot be obtained from, uh, from uh, the vector spaghetti model. The other uh, suggested uh, format uh, which, which is present in a vector domain is basically labeling all the vertices and its corresponding x and y location. So it's basically a set of uh, vertices irrespective of its uh, the feature. So like over here we are having a, a geographical area, we are having a point and then we are also having a line. So all the nodes which belongs to all these uh, three kind of features are listed down, coded and corresponding X and Y value has been put in. So this basically gives the, uh, the location of the different point and those locations are basically identified with an index. Now, uh, if we want to reconstruct back or, or understand that which all features are present in, uh, in this, uh, uh, file, then we need to have uh, a secondary information which basically tells that uh, uh, a polygon consists of which all nodes, a line consists of which all nodes. In this example, we see that line C is consists of uh, 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 the point location 7, 8, 9 and uh, 10. So this as a whole forms the, the kind of uh, uh, information for completely giving the kind of geometrical types uh, and this this data set is called the vector uh, dictionary based models and it is basically have no duplicacy of information which was actually a demerit in the previous case and it also does not have any kind of uh, topologies linked to it. 
we'll now come back to again the uh, the vector format which we are discussing. So I was discussing about the uh, the vector spaghetti models. So in the in the vector spaghetti models, what we have is that we are having a different features, and each features like in this case the feature means uh, the, the geography or geospatial objects like uh, polygon or line or maybe point. So we we look for a, a kind of set of uh, vertices which is a part of uh, uh, the different uh, objects. So over here we are having a six different vertex which is a part of uh, polygon A and we are also having uh, three different uh, vertex which is a part of line and one vertex which is just representing a single point. So in a spaghetti model uh, we, we represent each of those features as a single file. So it is having an objects like uh, polygon or a line or a point and, and we store the number of uh, coordinates or the number of vertices which is part of this. So over here we see that uh, this polygon is having a six vertex and then all the six vertex, uh, uh, the coordinate, x and y coordinate is being stored. Similarly, we also have uh, uh, the point uh, location B and it is just consist of a single vertex and its corresponding location is being stored. We are also having uh, a linear features that is the line C over here and this line C is consist of four different uh, points. This uh, is 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th. So that is getting represented as 1, 2, 3.5, 2 and so on. So there are total four vertex which actually uh, forms a single line and that is being represented over here. So this data set or this representation of model is quite simple. Anyone can or any and anyone can construct it easily and it is very easy to manage for a particular area simply create you'll be having a single file there's no need to uh, look for or join any additional informations uh, uh, in, in any other file so that's why it is easy to manage but this is not having a uh, topology associated with it and it has a lot of uh, duplication especially in the cases uh, uh, if we have uh, some polygon uh, uh, which is associated or linked to a any, uh, any uh, linear features or a vertex and so on. So there are a lot of uh, redundancy in this data set is possible. There is another format which is called a dictionary based system. So in this case, uh, instead of having a single file where all the information is stored, it will have a two different uh, file structures. So one of the file structure will basically store only the uh, indices or the uh, uh, location of each of the vertex which is possible within a uh, study area. So over here we are having total 10 points. So this file is only storing the, uh, the vertex and its corresponding x, y locations. And then in a second file, we uh, construct uh, or, uh, or the second file is basically going to have the each features and corresponding list of vertices which is part of this. So in this case polygon A is actually consist of all the vertex from 1 to 6 so that is getting represented. Polygon uh, point B is simply a one point location or so vertex 11 and the line C consists of four different vertex X uh, which we see uh, is available over here. The Third model which, uh, which is possible in a vector data model is that is also called a, a DIME model or dual independent map encoding format. So this was one of the suggested uh, format of storing the data sets. Over here, uh, the earlier limitations of the data set that it was not having any kind of uh, topologies or it was not giving uh, information that which particular feature is on the left and right information that was missing. So it, in, in this case, along with the, uh, the, the dictionary format which you have seen, the additional information was added which gives the kind of uh, topological relationship. Topological relationship means it gives the kind of relationship of neighborhood. So it, it gives the information uh, in the case of like this that we are having uh, a line and on this line we are having an uh, left side and the right side which all features are present and which all uh, polygon and area is present that can be marked in. 
for example uh, uh, in in case of uh, segment a so this is segment a which consists of uh, point 1 and point 2 so you are having a two direction one is on the left side of the direction another one is on the right side so it means like you have you will see that it's a green color which is inside and on the white color which is actually outside of this polygon so these these two forms the or provides the kind of association with this linear features which tells that on the left side on the right side of this uh, line you are having a polygon and on the left side of this uh, 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 polygon you are having another polygon so over here we see that segment a which is this one the right side of this is actually an external polygon so if if you are not, if you are having a polygon which is not marked to anyone is called an external polygon and on the left side of this is actually an internal polygon so that's that's how for each of those line segment we can create a kind of left and right polygon associations and that gets stored So in case of uh, uh, if polygon features, which we see that one side of all the vertices, uh, on the one side of all these uh, uh, vertices, you'll be having the same polygon present, but on the right, on the on the outside, you have a having an, another polygon. So this basically gives the kind of uh, representation of two different polygons, which is being uh, shared, uh, which will have a shared segment like this. similarly uh, and this is this is only in the cases which uh, which forms the the close uh, uh, segment sometime there may be cases that uh, uh, especially in the cases of line where on the left and right of uh, or the left and right of the polygon you will be having a similar kind of polygon existing so over here ghi uh, which is nothing but these segments so these segments are actually Uh, present over here you are seeing that on the left of this is also a, a, a external polygon on the right right of this is also again an external uh, polygons and this forms the kind of uh, uh, relationship on the left and right basis which helps to maintain the topology uh, present in in our uh, data sets and all this topological information along with the polygon it also stores what is the start and end points so this this gives the kind of directionality directionality becomes an uh, or direction vector becomes an important aspect for geospatial data for example in case of uh, uh, traffic data set we need to have uh, uh, a direction if uh, to tell that it is a one way road or two way road or uh, 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 so this this two distinction has to be made or that is possible only when we have a directionality present in our uh, data sets and over here the directionality is being maintained in uh, dime data models the other popular uh, vector model uh, which is present and that is called the arc model and this is basically uh, uh, taken from uh, or it's being used in arcgis uh, software so it will have a four different files and each of them is actually will represent different different kind of uh, informations like in this case the line segments or the uh, lines are not only uh, lines are basically will have a start and end points and in between you will be having a lot of vertices so there is a distinction between start node and end node and intermediate node which are also called a vertex so over here we store a uh, different uh, arc or a different line with the start and end point and corresponding vertex is being represented for example over here uh, the, the the line is being represented as a single arc uh, which is having a starting point a uh, starting node as a 3 and end node as a 4 and that's how the start and uh, in node uh, is being created so start node 3 is having a location x and y so this is the 1 comma 2 and similarly for fourth uh, data set this is approximately uh, 2 point uh, in in x direction you have 5.2 and in y direction you having around 2 and 2.5 or 2.7 so this is being represented as a terminal uh, node so this gives the kind of directionality which is present in your data set so this is the start point and this is the end point so we can say that 
the movement or, or the flow in this direction is actually is from st start of first node to the last node. In between, we are having an intermediate vertex like uh, uh, vertex 6, 10, uh, 6, uh, 8 and 10 and its location has been stored as an intermediate uh, vertex list. So, this the fun first file basically maintains the all the data sets present in uh, all the arc data set or the, or the linear feature present in our data set with start and end node and with the intermediate uh, uh, nodes. There, there are also, so in this case we see that we are going to have all the linear uh, features. So be it a, a single linear features or those uh, linear or the line features present in a polygon. But there is no information available for uh, uh, the point data sets. So we are having uh, another uh, uh, file which stores the node topologies, so which gives the kind of uh, information which says that these nodes belongs to which all are. So if any node belongs to uh, uh, line and polygon, then it says that on the left side of this node is actually particular uh, line segment, on the right side of that node is another uh, node segments. It basically gives the topological information for a particular node. So over here we see that uh, uh, the polygon 1, uh, 2, 3, 4 and so on, those are going to have uh, uh, a node associated with that. For example, over here we are having a, uh, a 4 point. 4 point is only having a single uh, location and that is being represented over here. We are also having uh, a topological information for uh, start and in point and correspondingly uh, the arc based topologies and as well as the polygon is also going to have an associated topologies based on the uh, arc length. So arc model basically uh, stores all the topological relationship be it at the uh, linear features or at the node features or at the arc itself or, or maybe in the polygon. So it stores all the topological information related to uh, 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 any geospatial uh, data sets. So those were actually the different, uh, four different uh, ways of storing the vector data sets. Now we'll see a raster data format. So raster data sets are nothing but a set of uh, regular grid, which will have uh, a certain number of rows and column. And each uh, grid uh, or a cell within a, a matrix will contain a few uh, values. So generally, uh, we say that uh, cell is going to have uh, uh, attribute values and as well as location. So each cell is actually a regularly spaced. So we can easily find out what is the coordinate systems by uh, simply doing a uh, small amount of algebra and then we can get the positions. And in, in raster format, there is no need to store the topological informations because the grid data set is already having an inbuilt uh, uh, ordering uh, data sets. So this is just an example how the, uh, the same information which you have seen earlier will be stored in a raster based format. So the raster based format we see that uh, all the grid wherever the linear features or the point feature is captured that whole grid is actually assigned to that feature. So it means that there is an imprecision or error gets introduced uh, in a raster format. And as well as there is a distortion in the shape. So you see this is a staggering effect which we see earlier. Uh, uh, the actual feature which looks like uh, having a separate uh, shape but after uh, converting it into a raster based format it looks slightly different. Similarly is the case with the linear features. And, and this is basically a demerit of a raster data set. It is not having a point which is as uh, the, um, or the location of all these individual points as precise as we uh, get it in, uh, in, in vector format. In fact, in vector format, all the data points will have an associated uh, coordinate systems or, or uh, the pair of latitude and longitude, where in case of raster format, we don't have any uh, storage of or, or there is no provisions to store the location of individual nodes rather than only the origin point uh, 
uh, the start and end node is being uh, created and then there are fixed length which gets added to create a, uh, or to map the locations. The raster data format also you see that there is a spe specific uh, ordering. So it means like uh, there are few grid which is present on the right side of uh, one grid and as well as the left side of the grid. So over here we see that uh, three is basically below the two uh, the grid uh, which is having a characteristic or the poly or the value which is two. So this relationship which is called uh, north-south relationship or uh, uh, east-west relationship or maybe in direction northeast and southwest kind of relationship. So these relationship for any particular point is fixed and that's why in the raster data sets we don't need to store explicitly uh, the uh, the topological information which we see in uh, uh, in, in vector data sets. So uh, this is just a representation of uh, uh, the grid coordinate systems. If you observe over here, uh, the location of all these points or the within the grid, even the information is present, but if you want to find out the position of that uh, uh, value, then uh, by convention that can be either at the center of this grid or maybe at the left and right, uh, uh, left uh, bottom uh, or maybe the top uh, uh, left side. So these can be considered origin. Most of the GI software follows the convention that uh, the grid center will contain the, uh, the location information. So this is how we are seeing that this is the location area of 8,4 whenever we say so this is actually a center and it will also have a kind of value associated with it so this value will be uh, represented over uh, here. So out of uh, if, if you carry out any kind of uh, rasterization process so you may be having a features uh, which will quite smooth but after rasterization we see that uh, there is the, the kind of distortion in the shape and this distortion is dependent upon the grid size. So if you go for a finer grid size, then this distortion can be reduced and we may be able to approximate the shape uh, of the actual feature. But again, that uh, if you go for increase in the size of uh, grid uh, or the increase in size of grid resolutions or, or in other word, we can say if you increase the number of uh, grids to represent a features, then the size of uh, file will also get increased. So this is just a example where multi-layer data sets for uh, a particular features can be put in into different grids. So there are uh, different way of storing the multi raster data formats and this is basically uh, most useful if you're having a stack data sets and mostly used in uh, 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 in case of uh, remote sensing satellite database systems where you'll have uh, n number of uh, channels and each channel is going to have a specific data sets. So over here, over here this is just an example of a data set which will have four different bands. So just consider that this data set or, uh, is coming from let's say list three sensors which is having a four different uh, instrument. Uh, then NIR, uh, red, green and uh, uh, and WIR. So, and so that kind of information or different range of information may be present based on the satellite and these will be stored separately. So in, in multi-layer raster format we arrange all of them in a different way. So these are called, uh, these formats are called BIP or band, uh, basically band interleaved or uh, similarly are a band sequential format or band interleave by line. So this is band interleave by pixels. So it means that in a continuous fashion, you will store uh, the information for a particular location. Let's say this is the starting point or the location. So over here, we are having four different band and these bands are in order of uh, these four. This is the order of these bands. So over here, we are having uh, 73, 42, 90 and 95. Each of uh, the value from that location is getting extracted and that is being arranged over here. So that's how you store in a band interleave uh, by pixel format or BIF format. Similarly, we also have a band sequential format where we stored uh, uh, all the band information one by one. So you just take the total band as such 
and in other format which is called a bil format which is nothing but taking one row from each of those uh, separate band and stack them together to build uh, first uh, line information similarly we can have a second line information fourth and fifth so this is the way of representing the uh, multi layer raster data format and this is widely used uh, uh, especially dealing with the remote sensing satellite data storage in case of uh, raster format there is an also uh, a compression is required because if you see the representation of these data sets we are having uh, over here around 8 by 8 uh, uh, grid size and there are lot of repetition of information so over here if we store it like at the pixel number 1 or the location 1 is having a value a or, or a class or land this this value can be anything like it may be a land use it may represent the height information and so on so if this is stored uh, in this uh, in this fashion so there are n rows and m columns so accordingly uh, we need to have uh, that many entries present in a table so 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 if you see that there is a lot of redundancy of information which is uh, available over here and this needs to be reduced so that is possible with a different encoding format uh, uh, the simplest encoding format which is called a length uh, run uh, or or run length encoding format in which we say that the value a particular value how many times it is getting repeated and what is the start and end uh, location so that's how the uh, uh, the value is getting uh, represented and that's how uh, we reduce so it means we will having a value a and this is being repeated four times and corresponding it starts and end point is being put in and this is the way we create a complete uh, run length uh, encoding format uh, which which helps in compression of the data sets and uh, Uh, reduce the size of the raster data format so if you if you do a comparison of vector and raster data format uh, if uh, then we can say is basically a vector is an object based model so accordingly you can maintain the shape uh, of any geospatial features where raster is basically cell based model or it's also a called grid based models so we have seen that there may be an staggering effect uh, may be uh, uh, resulted due to this uh, cell based structures and each of the uh, in in case of vector data sets generally your locations will be uh, fixed ones uh, i mean you can have a fractional positional point which you can provide it in term of x and y locations but in case of rasters uh, the increment in x direction and in the y direction is with a fixed unit and that that unit will be dependent upon the resolutions of your grid size which you have uh, taken most of the time uh, if you see that uh, in in case of vector you only need to store uh, the information related to only the coordinate point which is present uh, or which represents an object so there is a less information presence and accordingly it will require a less space where in case of uh, uh, raster data format it's a grid based systems so you need to store each and every value for e uh, for each grid you need to store the corresponding values so as the grid size increases the space is also required will be quite large and in case of uh, vector based model it's it's basically a point line and uh, uh, polygons these are the basic uh, uh, unit using which we form any geospatial objects where in case of uh, raster the basic object itself is a cell then most of the time if you do a vector based analysis it's mostly based on the uh, geometrical solutions which needs to be carried out but in case of raster a simple uh, uh, algebraic solution is possible because you have a fixed grid size so there is no role of uh, geometrical objects playing rather than only value and presence and absence within a grid of that value will determine the the kind of uh, operation which you are performing in a raster domain so accordingly the raster will require only algebraic analysis so it will only addition subtraction uh, uh, the kind of solution is possible where in case of vector we need to have uh, analysis related to a geometrical uh, base analysis like uh, intersection 
uh, or the uh, union such kind of information or such kind of operation will be there in case of vector as we said earlier that each of the point is geo reference where in case of raster only you'll be having a grid origin and then we'll be having a fixed unit using uh, on which the cell size or the grid size will get moved and that can be uh, uh, obtained by doing a simple algebraic uh, calculations in there are a lot of different formats which supports the vector files if you see any format like shp or kml format or kmz format so those files are actually uh, the part of uh, vector family where uh, the images like img tiff or hdf nc so these formats are basically uh, format which stores the uh, data set in a raster uh, format so those two raster and vector were basically for planimetric data representation it means that you are going to represent the geospatial data in a plane uh, but there is no need to have uh, or there is an always a need to store the third dimension that is the height informations and the simplest uh, vector model which uh, is capable of storing that is called a tin model so tin is basically uh, a set of uh, triangles uh, and those triangles basically uh, are being arranged or are being modeled in such a way that they gives you the height information so there are a few constraint is being built and those are the dual nc triangle it is also called and it's basically that uh, if you take any two point or any three points all of them three points should form a circle uh, and then there should not be any third point present uh, within that circle and the circle has to be created in such a way that the or point needs to be selected in such a way that they are well uh, distributed within the triangle uh, within a circle and so so there are a few set of basically a uh, rules which governs uh, the formation of all these uh, triangles and once this triangles is getting created then we can form a simple tin models so this is just an example on the representation of uh, uh, the tin model which is having a, uh, basically a ref references location x and y and corresponding uh, for each those point and corresponding z values and then combination of these two is going to create an uh, different edges of uh, these nodes uh, or, or of uh, for these faces and the corresponding uh, topological relationship like this face on the left or the, in the right which particular uh, triangle is present that is also being stored so you store the uh, different nodes for each of those faces and then we also stores the uh, the adjacency relationship or means like topological relationship to uh, represent a complete tin model the uh, geospatial data sets not only the stored in a file based systems which you have uh, seen till now that's the vector and raster uh, or a tin format but now it's also possible to store the geospatial data set in different database management systems so database management systems are known for providing capabilities for uh, giving uh, query and analysis part and they are they are very uh, well developed for providing a faster processing of uh, uh, for doing in query analysis so relational databases or, or the different uh, uh, geospatial uh, databases actually provides uh, not only the attribute based query uh, but also kind of geometrical queries like find out all the points which is within the 5 km for uh, another point such kind of queries can also be carried out uh, in geospatial database uh, systems so generally uh, the uh, the databases which we see which is being used in geospatial are actually uh, uh, the hierarchical model network model relational model and object based uh, uh, relational models most of the time uh, you'll find out that geospatial databases will be using either relational or object relational based uh, model to store the uh, geospatial features this is just an example how you can store the geospatial uh, data sets so you'll have a geometrical features and then uh, for that geometry you can get an additional informations in another so this is basically a, a relational table which we build it and each of those entry in a row uh, row wise basically are called tuple 
and uh, the each column of these data sets are an attribute and this relationship is being built based on the id is called uh, uh, is basically follows the relational algebra concepts to do uh, form a simple linking between attribute and geospatial data sets so there are multiple relationship possible uh, between uh, either within the attributes or between the uh, geospatial objects and corresponding attributes so those are one to one one to many and so on uh, so there are generally uh, three different categories which is being found one to one is, uh, is shown over here similarly we can have a multiple entries for same ids so that is called one to many and many to one relationship so all these combined together uh, or, or the uh, basically requirements to uh, bring out or um, arrange or basically uh, to create tables and do an arrangement of different attributes in different tables are are basically governed by uh, a set of database uh, rules and those rules are actually the renormalization rule which is being followed and once your data set is stored then we can carry out a simple query as we do it a sql based uh, query or structural based structure query language based uh, query to find out the uh, uh, the attribute based query which is possible so there is also a possibility of uh, carrying out the uh, uh, geospatial query uh, or, or the fuzzy uh, based uh, distance query and so on so that depends upon the kind of functionality or capability which is uh, built in in your uh, geospatial data sets the there is an also uh, and uh, representation of the different feature models or a different uh, data set uh, or the different geospatial data set and that is standardization standardization has been done uh, uh, by a, a, a organization called ogc or open geospatial consortium so this basically they are responsible they are they are basically responsible for providing an interfaces uh, or a kind uh, to build an interfaces which will allow an integration of different softwares so this this they do it uh, by publishing a set of uh, format representations of the different uh, geospatial features and according to them they are also needs to have a proper hierarchical data sets model like uh, uh, all the geometry will uh, they have defined uh, different classes and in most of the software actually follows that uh, 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 this defined uh, abstract data structures uh, and corresponding hierarchies to build a complete uh, interoperable uh, uh, geospatial data sets so geometry is just an abstract then we can have uh, different subclasses of those geometries like line point polygon and so on and then we can also build and extend the topological information so there is a provision for, uh, within a geometrical class the abstract class which is being defined by an, uh, ogc to extend and provide the topological as well as uh, uh, the feature and a geospatial information in uh, presented in a single uh, data sets so if if you see according to the models we can store it uh, spatial referencing system we can also have a point line uh, or the different linear features and there are also uh, multi point line polygons so it's, it's a kind of capability and extension which allows to uh, create an island within a uh, 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 within an area and so on so this 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 kind of uh, advanced capabilities are also been built in uh, within the uh, OGC uh, simple feature model, so there's a lot. There's a complete uh, document which uh, which provides the uh, the way uh, which provides the uh, provision or the abstract data structures, and which also tells that which all information should be stored and how it should be stored and so on. So if anyone who is implementing these uh, uh, GIS software, they need to go through and make sure that they're uh, software is actually capable of providing those uh, uh, OGC standard. So it is having a multi-point capability. So it means like you can have a features which can be clubbed for a multiple points. So all these points may be considered as a single features, or a bunch of uh, line can also be considered as a single feature. So this is a kind of information which you have seen earlier in the ARC case. Uh, in, in in ARC data sets, which we have seen earlier, that within the ARC you can have multiple vertex 
so similarly uh, uh, and those vertexes are actually in intermediate nodes so they are only for a geometrical uh, purposes but for doing an, any analysis and calculation they doesn't uh, participate uh, in most of the query analysis so ogc provides the kind of uh, capability to store multiple uh, uh, geometrical features to belongs to a, uh, a single class or single objects and these are called multi point multi line and multi polygon and it is also possible to store multiple uh, uh, features of different uh, geometrical objects to be grouped together so 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 the such kind of capability has been uh, built in so with this actually uh, we come to the end of uh, uh, the today's presentations